Pascal Mouberger, you know him from yesterday. He has been on the panel coming from France, and he's the CEO of MacFi Energy. Thank you. Welcome. And your clickers there. <laughs> Thank you, Jan. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I will be presenting MacFi, but uh, I'm very glad that uh, Jan uh, regroup the uh, presentation of MacFi with uh, the presentation of solar fuel that uh, Stefan did a few minutes ago, because both of us will speak about hydrogen. He used as hydrogen as a fuel, I mean, a raw material to uh, synthesize uh, methane from CO2. My speech will uh, focus exclusively on hydrogen as a way to valorize renewable energy. So first, uh, a glance on the uh, hydrogen market potential. Uh, hydrogen is used, as you may know, as a raw material in the industry, a lot of it in the refinery, for example, or in the uh, uh, fertilizer uh, industry. And what you have on this graph is, in fact, a projection done by a French research organization, the CEA. And they, they, you see that uh, since uh, 95, 2000, 2005, there is already a strong established market for uh, uh, hydrogen, which is mainly driven by the industry. This is a market where 60 million tons of hydrogen are produced and used every year, and uh, which is uh, growing at a rate of about 4 to 5 to 6 percent per year. And what they are predicting, those guys, is that uh, starting in 2015, there will be an inflection point where two things will happen. First, the, the need for hydrogen in refineries and in the industry will continue to grow, but with the need to have a decarbonate, decarbonated hydrogen or low-carbon hydrogen. And I will comment on that a bit uh, later. And you see also that uh, starting in that same period of time, there is uh, a need for hydrogen as an energy vector. That's the hydrogen energy. Uh, both for uh, energy storage and for uh, transportation, and that's again, will be the, the, the focus of my speech. So, uh, just to explain a little bit, what is the uh, existing uh, value chain or supply chain of hydrogen? What you see on this chart is that hydrogen, you need to produce it. This is not something which is, which is available uh, on Earth. You have to extract it from hydrocarbons or from water. And today, uh, almost 100% of the hydrogen which is consumed in the uh, industry is extracted from hydro uh, hydrocarbon using uh, mainly uh, thermal processes like the uh, steam reforming of, gas, of natural gas. And you see that, uh, well, this is an efficient, uh, an efficient um, uh, process in terms of cost, but it produces a lot of CO2. Basically, 10, 10 kilograms of CO2 per kilogram of hydrogen when you want to extract it from natural gas. So this is something that you have to take into consideration, and this is something which, is meets, which starts to be visible, because the, um, the CO2 generated by the synthesis of hydrogen now represents about 3% of the uh, global warming gas uh, production on Earth. Now, uh, most of this hydrogen is consumed by captive customers, as I said, the refineries, the, uh, uh, the fertilizer, the methanol, uh, they, they produce large quantities of hydrogen from steam reforming, and they, they use it themselves. But about 10% of this uh, market is, in fact, uh, a market where people use hydrogen as a raw material. And I will comment that a bit later. You will see who, who they are. And they buy this hydrogen from, uh, from gas company. And basically, those gas company, they produce hydrogen the same way, with thermal processes, mainly from natural gas. They pressurize it to 200 bars, and they distribute it by truck to their customers, adding again CO2 in that, uh, in that chain. What we bring with McPhee is a game-changing technology. We have developed a technology, and we use a technology by which we can store large quantities of hydrogen at low pressure. We use metal hydrides to do so. And uh, when you have, like that, the possibility to store at low pressure quantities of hydrogen, you can use, in fact, what Stefan commented already, which is a mature technology like the water electrolysis, and you extract your hydrogen from water. When you do so, you don't add any CO2 in the process. You just have the CO2 content of the electricity you use. And if you use renewable energy, if you use electricity coming from wind or from solar, then it's a green hydrogen. It's a zero CO2 added hydrogen that you are producing. And that hydrogen produced by water electrolysis, and you see that the water electrolysis have a very decent efficiency, more than 70% now, combined with our storage, which has a very, very good efficiency also, more than 95%, you can then completely change the supply chain of hydrogen, and you can distribute, in fact, your hydrogen at the point of use. You can produce your hydrogen at the point of use. This is the on-site production of hydrogen. 
completely transforming the, uh, the supply chain of this merchant hydrogen market. And then you can really uh, 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 provide new solutions for the energy sector where you can add value to the renewal, renewable energy by hydrogen valorization, and I will comment that. Uh, we discussed already during that ecosomic the energy storage market. For today, it's a still a very small market. It's a market where there is no real ecosystem in place, so this is something which is still very difficult. It's very difficult to make money on the energy uh, storage today. Uh, and it's a small market which is in fact dominated today by one technology, which, is the, which are the steps. I mean, re pumping water back to the, uh, um, in, a, in a dam. Uh, you see that there are a lot of uh, technologies competing to position themselves on this uh, market. It goes from batteries, obviously, to the pumped hydro that I discussed, with the compressed air storage also. And this is a, a study made by the National Re Renewable Energy Laboratory in the US, and they were comparing all those technologies. And I have highlighted here in green uh, the various uh, technology on hydrogen that they were uh, evaluating, just to show that this is something which can be competitive in that uh, market of uh, 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 energy storage. And what we add, uh, what, we, what is the, the, the value proposition of MACFI is that we propose unique solutions to optimize the uh, renewable energy inter intermittency. We know that more and more we'll have uh, uh, renewable energy on the market, and we know that that will create issues on the grid, because those uh, uh, renewable energy are never in line with the consumption. So uh, basically, what do we provide? We provide solutions. Uh, combining our uh, storage, unique storage technology with electrolyzer to uh, take renewable energy electricity and then combine it, uh, transform it in hydrogen, store it at low pressure at the point of use, and then distribute it either to go to the uh, merchant market or to be injected in the uh, natural gas grid, and that's something which is very popular in, uh, in Germany. Uh, we are also working with uh, people like uh, GDF Suez in France on a project uh, very similar to that. And we also can use it as a fuel for vehicle. And by the way, I don't know if you noticed, but uh, just in front of this building, across the street, there is a total filling station. And this is one of the first hydrogen filling stations. You can go in that filling station at total, you can go with a car, a fuel cell car, and they can deliver hydrogen to your car. And for uh, less than 10 euro, you will get one kilogram of hydrogen. With 50 euro, you will be able to, to make 500 to 600 kilometers with your fuel cell car. This is one of the first hydrogen filling station that has been uh, implemented in, uh, in Europe and in, uh, in uh, Germany. And G Germany is a very strong pioneer in that, uh, in that business. Uh, what can we do with hydrogen? If you have a renewable energy source, you can produce electricity and inject it on the grid. If you are, if you are paid, with a feed-in tariff, there is no reason why you should not do that, so continue doing so. But the, the, way, the day your feed-in tariff will uh, fade up, then you will be uh, in front of a market where you will have a fluctuation of your prices, and uh, you will be paid uh, depending on the uh, need of electricity on your grid, and the price can fluctuate a lot. What I say is that you can also transform, sorry, you can also transform your uh, electricity in hydrogen, with the uh, yield that, that I mentioned already on the electrolyzer, you can store it with our storage, and you can valorize it on the merchant market. And if you do so, the value of your uh, megawatt hour of electricity will be above 200 euros per megawatt hour. So that's something, just because the, the, the value of hydrogen on the merchant market is about 10 euros per kilogram, and you need 50 uh, kilowatt hour of uh, electricity to make one kilogram of hydrogen. So when you start discussing that with people in the renewable energy business, and when they are thinking uh, at the future when they will be out of their feed-in tariff, this is something that starts to make sense for them. And we are in uh, uh, developing projects uh, in France with uh, people in the hydroelectricity, for example, uh, around this, uh, this thema. So we provide solutions for both markets, the um, industrial merchant market, where we develop on-site hydrogen solution for the customer using, uh, using hydrogen. And when you run your electrolyzer, uh, you can, in fact, run it at a time where your electricity at, is at low price, and you can optimize, obviously, your energy bill, optimizing your uh, electrolyzer on one hand. You store the hydrogen in our storage system, and you use your hydrogen when you need it. So you will have, in fact, hydrogen on demand, optimizing the, your energy bill. And that's something which is, which is unique and that we are proposing to the market. 
On the, other, on the other side, we propose also solutions to the renewable energy uh, market, where, in fact, we can add value to the business by transforming uh, electricity into gas and bridging, in fact, the two, the two grids, the electrical grids and the gas grid and the gas market. So uh, I told you that I, will, I would give you some uh, uh, view on what are the users of uh, merchant hydrogen in the market clearly. For example, most of you know that in the microelectronic business, they use a lot of hydrogen, but also in the food industry, in the glass industry. So all those people, they use um, quantities of hydrogen which are delivered by trailers, by truck. So uh, today, we are proposing to those people to optimize their energy bill and produce the hydrogen by themselves. Just a few, a few numbers to illustrate the, uh, the business case. Uh, because a lot of people are always challenging us on, uh, on the cost of, the, of, this, uh, of this process. Uh, when you take uh, a very mature uh, electrolyzer technology plus our storage technology that we are now starting to produce in volumes, and you put all the, all the numbers together, this is a, a, real, a real case uh, on a small hydro, uh, um, hydro production of 300 kilowatts. We could produce 40, 45 tons of hydrogen per year, uh, and if we, if we sell it uh, on the final user market at 10 euros per kilogram, that will be a gas company, that won't be us, huh? that will be a gas company that will sell it on the gas, uh, on the gas market. And with a transfer price between the, uh, the uh, producer and the uh, distributor of 5 euros per kilogram, you, have, uh, you see a, a rate of return of about 14 to 15 percent, which is balanced between the two, the, the renewable energy producer and the gas distributor. So it's, it's a... It's a market which is, which is profitable, which is attractive for both. And this is what we are developing. Now, a few words on the uh, development of McPhee. So we, we started the, the, the company in 2008. In fact, I was not part of the, of the team at that point. I joined the team uh, one year later when uh, we did the first uh, round of financing. Uh, we raised 1.5 million euros from investors, mainly from MRTech, and they are in the room. So I thank you for their support. Uh, with that first round of financing, we created the core team, we created the, the, the tools, we created the first prototype, and uh, we were able to go to demonstrate the, at industrial scale that the technology was working. And then uh, we raised a second round of financing, almost 14 million euros from investors, uh, both Sofinova and GIMF with MRTech uh, uh, decided to support us, and I thank you also for their support. Uh, and with that, we have finalized the first production line, and we are now in the commercial phase, delivering our first product to the, uh, to the customers. Uh, we moved also from pure storage uh, provider to now a solution provider, meaning that we can, pro we can provide not only the storage, but also the electrolyzer, partnering with some, uh, some key uh, partners in that, uh, in that, run, in that uh, field. Our, our uh, product roadmap today, we deliver small product, 4 kilogram hydrogen, uh, we will have 100 kilograms of hydrogen uh, available at the end of this year, and next year we'll go to the 300 kilograms of hydrogen. And this is some pictures of the first products which, have, which we delivered, one in uh, Japan, one in Italy, one in, uh, in the UK, very soon one in, uh, <coughs> in France for a German company, and, uh, and we hope to continue that. Thank you.